I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you've heard the term gain staging before because to be honest, it comes up almost every day in music production. You're going to see it in online groups and forums. You're going to see it in terms of YouTube videos that you're watching, tips that you're going to be getting from maybe peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And to be honest, gain staging can be important, but it's one of those things that I feel like it's wildly overcomplicated. And I feel like a lot of people talk about certain aspects of gain staging, but don't necessarily dive into in my opinion, arguably more important aspects of gain staging, especially in a modern era. So in this video, we're gonna go over what gain staging is, we're gonna go how to gain stage throughout your tracking and mixing process, and we're gonna go over what changing gain levels in different areas of your mix actually does for things like how plugins react, how you know your bus compressors are gonna react, all of that kind of stuff. So we're gonna dive into all of that in a second, but before we do, my name's Austin, you're watching Make Pop Music. We have weekly tutorials on music and music production, so if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you wanna see a specific video, let us know in the comments down below. And then after this video, if you want to support our channel, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com, where we've got tons of free and paid content. We've got sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs. We've got a course over there. So head over there and check that out. But let's dive into Cubase so I can actually start breaking down what gain staging is and how you can actually utilize that inside your own workflow. We're going to dive in and we're going to go over gain staging throughout your entire recording and mixing process to really make sure that you have control over the vibe that you want when gain staging. But before we do that, let's go over a quick definition if you may not be familiar. Gain staging is the process of making sure the audio is set to an optimal level for the next processor in the chain in order to minimize noise and uh, distortion. Uh, that came from isotope.com. That's a really, really solid description of gain staging because I feel like a lot of people talk about certain aspects of when you're gain staging, but they don't necessarily dive into the more important parts. So the kind of parts that I hear talked about is, you know, you don't want to clip your interface or your preamp going into your DAW, which is great. If you basically have your audio too loud going into an interface or into a preamp or into something like that, and it goes over zero dB, that's where you start to get that crackly distortion. And once that's baked into a signal going into your computer, it's there forever. So make sure that you're not clipping your audio, make sure that your audio is not peaking super, super, super hot. Um, but also on the flip side, make sure that you have a healthy level because if you record everything really, really, really quiet, any kind of gear that you use, whether it's a microphone, a preamp, an analog synth, a guitar, they all have noise floors, which means that they emit just a certain amount of that kind of like buzzy, hissy frequency. And what happens is if you record it at a really, really, really like low level, I'm going to have to boost that, that vocal or that guitar by 24 dB, 30 dB in the mix to get it to really start competing with everything. And as I boost that vocal, it's also boosting all of that background noise. So what's going to happen is you have this really noisy kind of staticky vocal. But on the flip side, if you clip it, you've got that distortion. So what you want is you want to track something that's kind of right in the middle. I like to aim for when I'm tracking, typically I'll try to get between like negative 12 and negative 6 dB. Um, as where I'm like peaking because that gives me a health enough, a healthy enough signal to really finesse it inside my DAW. I can go in and I can do things like clip gain, which we're going to talk about in a second. I can go in and add things like a gain utility or adjust my fader, but I'm not going to have things like clipping or tons and tons of background noise baked in. So make sure you keep in mind your gain when you're actually physically tracking things because if you clip something on the way in, it's done. If you record something that is super quiet and it has a noise floor, it's done. There's really nothing you can do about that. But let's dive into the next aspect of gain staging, and that is what happens inside your actual DAW. So I assume if you're watching this video, you're using a modern DAW, and typically in these, you have pretty much infinite headroom, which means that inside of a session itself, you can have your level set to kind of whatever you want on these faders. Like, I have a, a main drums bus right here that right now, with my master bus chain and everything that's happening. It's right around negative 3.5 dB. I'm just doing this because that's where it sounded like I enjoyed it. And uh, to be honest, I'm not super particular with setting things like individual levels, but I also have this master bus chain on. So what's gonna happen is I could turn that drum bus up 60 dB and technically, it's not going to clip inside of Cubase until this master bus gets above zero, which will never happen because I have a limiter on it. But let's take this master bus chain off. Let's solo out these drums. And I want to show you what clipping inside a DAW actually does sound like. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. Here's what the master bus kind of comes in at. So negative 3.5. Let's go ahead and let's turn these drums up 5 dB. So this should technically hit about 1.5. And this is what clipping in your DAW sounds like. Keep in mind, this is gonna be gross, it's gonna have that distortion.
I've got oversampling on in Cubase, so it's still reading zero, but I know for a fact we're clipping. So that's coming in around 1.5 above where we need it to be. However, what would happen is let's say that I'd set something like a limiter, right? So let's say I just set a Pro L2, and let's say I'm not gonna add any gain, I'm not really gonna finesse any of this, but I'm gonna make this just 0.1 dB, true peak limiting, which means that now, no matter how much I increase that drum, it's never gonna go over zero on my output. It's not gonna clip. So now you're not hearing that distortion, you're not hearing that grossness. I could even start turning this up. And now you're starting to get some of that gross distortion because what happens is not only are you looking for the actual levels, right? Because that still says negative one. Now what's happening though is pretty much every plugin, whether it's an analog style plugin, digital plugins or whatever, they're going to have thresholds where they start to kind of add in things like saturation, their own kind of forms of clipping. And it's all digital, so it can all be undone later. But you want to keep in mind that you're kind of referencing that when you're mixing. So let me turn this back down to negative five so it doesn't just blow everybody's eardrums out. We've talked about technically inside your DAW, you can kind of have your faders wherever. What's really important is to realize what's gonna come after that, right? So let's use a vocal for this example. I find vocals to be a pretty easy example. So right now we have a completely mixed vocal by Riley, but let me go ahead and use one that we have that's just like a demo track. So here's what his raw vocal sounded like. He's doing a little bit of compression. He's doing a little bit of EQ but here's what it sounds like and, and where it kind of sits. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. So he's coming in at negative three. Uh, really, it's negative six. It's because I've turned the fader up three dB. But let's go ahead and let's add something like a compressor, right? So let me go ahead and reset this because this is just for an example. Um, I'm just going to clear it out, drag a new one in. So what happens is when you feed things like an EQ, a compressor, a saturation unit, that is analyzing what the signal coming into that looks like, and it's responding accordingly. So just like if I were to use a preamp, you start getting into that yellow, you start getting into that red, it has a totally different characteristic than if you were to kind of sing into it a little bit softer. The same thing happens with plugins throughout your entire production and mix. So make sure that you're paying attention to what your gain sounds like. Most plugins in the manual will talk about kind of where their optimal like gain input kind of sits. So let's look at this 1176 style e, uh, compressor from Slate Digital. Right now, his vocal's coming in around negative six. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Not even hitting this compressor yet. So to get this 1176 to kick in, there's two things that you could do. You could either take the individual track right here and you could do what's called clip gain. So clip gain is going to basically turn the track up pre-fader and pre-insert. So Whatever I do with this clip gain, if I turn it down 60 dB, if I turn it up 30 dB, that's going to affect how this signal feeds into things like my EQ inserts, my compressor inserts, yada, yada, yada. So let's turn this up a little bit, and you'll see that we're going to start having some compression happen. Get your ears ready. This is going to be loud. Let me actually turn the output down. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. So you can see that as we turn up his vocal coming in, that starts hitting that compressor pretty decently. What we can do though is if you don't want to clip gain on an individual level, like let's say you wanted to keep this where it was when the artist sent it, you can typically use something like input knobs on a compressor on an EQ. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. However, I will say that some, especially analog style uh, compressors and EQs and saturation units, as you start using their input knob, it actually starts imparting its own characteristics because that's using a circuit that would be in something like that hardware unit. Where if I'm doing it from the actual clip gain automation, that's just a clean signal boost. So it's, it's going to react the same once it starts doing actual gain reduction. But you might run into the issue where let's look at something like an LA-2A. If you have a signal that's way too loud coming into this, even with peak reduction. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You already know that it's straight to the- You can see that we are just pinning this way too hard. Yes, you could pull down your peak reduction, but with something like an LA-2A or like a CL-1B, if you have a really, really, really loud source coming into that, that might start kind of blooming out those low mids, and you might find that your source is getting really muddy, it's getting really tubby, and that's typically because you're driving something that has, you know, built-in saturation. So these, you know, typically will have some kind of tube or some kind of light processor, and once you drive those too hard, since these are analog modeled, 
it starts imparting those kind of tangible characteristics on your tone. So make sure that when you're using especially analog style EQs and compressors, you pay attention to that signal sound coming in because if you are driving something way too hot or you're not driving it hard enough, you're not going to be getting the tone or the control from that unit that you're actually looking for. So we've talked about how to actually record into your DAW where you don't have messed up gain. We've talked about how to actually affect how something like an EQ or a compressor is gonna respond with things like clip gain automation. One cool tip too is like, let's say I have a really dynamic vocal. Riley's is not so much because he, he already did some compression, but let's say you have a vocal where in some parts it's only doing two dB of gain reduction and in some parts it's doing negative 10 dB of gain reduction. What you can do is you can go in and you can literally highlight an area. So let's say this area needed to be, let's say this area was really loud, like it was recorded like that. And it's just hitting the compressor way too hard. Chop it, bring it down. So since this is all pre-fader, and pre-insert, pretty much anything that you do on this is going to affect how that compressor responds. So you can really kind of even out your audio before compression, and that tends to get you a little bit more uh, headroom. And it just kind of helps the compressor sound more consistent throughout the entire thing, rather than you know really pinning a compressor and then letting off so it's no compression, and then really hitting it hard. That's where you start to, to get that like really pumpy sound. It starts to have that kind of saturation that you don't want. Those low mids start to get a little bit tubby. So make sure that Every time you're using something like a compressor or an EQ, you're kind of making sure that that gain going into that is exactly how you want it. Because if not, it's going to completely change the way that that actually reacts. And then this can actually be said for pretty much the entire mix process. So you have a signal coming into your interface that goes into your DAW. That's on an individual channel like this. Then you have gain where you can kind of change that gain digitally with clip gain automation or pre-fader gain. You could also use something like you know, I could just add something like a kilo hearts gain before a virtual mix rack. It's the same thing. It's just clean gain coming before you're going to have gain dependent processing. That is a huge, huge, huge thing that not enough people pay attention to. That can really make or break a mix if you are feeding compressors and EQs shitty si uh, signals. Way too loud, way too quiet, not consistent. Make sure that you're kind of keeping that in mind. And then also make sure that you keep in mind that throughout your entire mix process, once you start setting levels and once you start dialing in things like compressors, EQs, saturation units, anything that is gain dependent, even reverbs and stuff like that. As you start tweaking things later, it's going to react how that, it's going to change how that reacts, right? So on this mix, for instance, let's take this at the most macro level of gain staging. I have a compressor on my bus. It is just a FG Red. And I set this after I got my kind of general levels throughout my entire mix set. Because what you do with a compressor is you're setting that threshold, which is where that compressor will kick in. And then you're going to set things like makeup gain. So here's what this compressor looks like in my actual mix. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. I really like what this compressor is doing. It's doing about 1 dB of gain reduction. And then when I have these really hard peaks, it's going to hit about negative 3 dB of gain reduction. That to me is perfect for this master bus. But what would happen is let's say I decided oh, I need to print artist stems, and some of these are clipping at an individual level, which they can't be if you're printing the stems. I need to go ahead and drag everything down. So I'm gonna highlight all of these tracks, and then I'm going to, on Cubase, I'm gonna hit Shift-Alt, and I'm gonna turn all of these down, I don't know, 10 dB. If you were to do that, that is going to drastically, drastically, drastically affect how this bus processor sounds. So to kind of simulate that, because I don't wanna mess this entire mix up, let's drag a utility plugin right here. So let's say I turned everything down, and ended up coming in about 12 dB quieter because I didn't want individual signals clipping for stems. Watch what this compressor does when it's 12 dB too quiet. It does nothing, right? So like, once you've set things at a certain level, whether that's individual or a group level or a bus level or your master bus level, if you start changing things anywhere in that process, it's going to change that relationship. So think of gain as like we go, you know, said in that kind of, intro description, it's the process of making sure the audio is set to an optimal level for the next processor in the chain in order to minimize noise and distortion. And I would even add on to that uh, to impart the characteristics that you're looking for when you add something like a processor. Let's do the opposite. Let's go ahead and turn this up. Let's say that we are turning this up plus 6 dB. And just to mimic that, we can even drag this down 6 dB. So let's take this to like negative eight. Um, Technically, it should have the same volume because we're driving gain into this compressor and then we're makeup gaining coming out of it. But watch how hard this hits the compressor. Let's say I was like, oh, I need to turn all of these drums up 5 dB and I need to turn the vocals up 2 dB. If you do that, 
this whole master bus chain is different. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You now we're getting three to five dB of gain reduction. And for me, for this mix, that's too much. So let's bypass this. Let's undo this. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. And you can easily see how once you set that level for something and you have the characteristics that you like, going back and changing things on an individual level or changing things on a group level can start to just completely throw your kind of entire chain out of whack. Um, so now that we've talked about what gain staging is, where to kind of pay attention to it, where clipping matters, where clipping is not so concerning, let's talk about the last thing, and that is how to make sure that throughout your mixing process, you don't have that issue where as you go back and you do a revision, you change all of your drum levels and that screws up your master buzz, or you change a lead vocal level and that affects your reverb send. What you can do is these are things called gain matching. So like, let's look at Riley's verse, for instance. Uh, let's go ahead and use something like, I don't know, whatever. We can, let's use an EQ because we've done so much uh, compression talk in this video. So let's use like, let's use the mod EQ. This is just from Apogee. Uh, as a side note, I didn't realize for a long time that for the Apogee plugins, you do not have to have an Apogee interface, which they're great interfaces if you have one, um, but I'm UAD. You do not have to have an Apogee interface to use their plugins, and they have some really, really, really solid stuff, so I highly recommend that. Go check that out after this video. Just a quick little aside and kind of a PSA because I feel like not a lot of people know that, but let's do some crazy compression, right? So, I mean, or some crazy EQ. So I'm just going to do a shelf and add like 7 dB because I don't want to get too nitty gritty with this, but this is going to raise the level a lot, right? She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You already know that it's straight to the back of the club from the moment I walk in. Butch. So what's cool about a lot of these Apogee plugins, and one thing that I want to explain because I want to show this compared to something like ProQ, is make sure that when you're using a plugin, you know if that plugin is doing something called auto gain matching. So let's turn this up. I'm going to do a 7 dB or a 9. Let's do a 9 dB boost throughout pretty much the entire frequency spectrum. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. You can see that even if I disable it and enable it, that gain does not change. Now, if I were to drag this over here, it's going to change the perceived volume, but technically the gain is going to stay the same. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. And what it's doing there is it's just making sure that as you make moves, you're not making moves on does that actually sound better or not. Versus something like Pro-Q, this has auto gain matching, but if you don't have that enabled, you have to be careful because let's say that I do something like a 70B boost right here. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You already... So let's say you go in and you start making things like EQ moves before a compressor, you start doing things like this, you start doing things like this. You don't know how that EQ actually sounds, right? So now we're doing this really gnarly EQ, which you would never do in a mix, but you can see that it is completely changing the audio. It is making this audio a lot louder. And so as you, you know, compress things or EQ things, if you don't use auto gain or you don't go in and actually level match and gain match, that is going to completely change how that next plugin functions as well. So let's say you had a compressor and then you realize I need to take away a little bit of the low end before it hits that compressor. So we can do that right here. Let's get a quick little example. Let's add something like a, a 76. Pretty much anyone. I'll just use the CLA, which I almost never use, but just so you can kind of see. Let's get some gain reduction. She want the cameras and TMs. But let's say, oh, this has a lot of low mids that I don't necessarily want. Let me drag those out. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You already know that it's straight to the back of the... So you can see that as we take away a lot of that low mid information, that vocal actually gets quieter. And since that vocal is feeding into a compressor, that compressor is not being hit as hard now. Where what we could do is, let's turn the compressor off so we can show you how to uh, level match and gain match. Without this EQ, this vocal's hitting. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every... Negative seven, nine. So it should be about the same after the EQ. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in You can see that we're only at negative nine. So if your plugin does not have audio gain, what you can do is you can use something like a meter like here or a VU meter to see where that's hitting. So let's turn it up like 2 dB. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. Don't show my pin when I drop it. You know my anxiety's popping. You already know that it's straight to the back of the club from the moment I walk. She want the cameras and TMZ popping up every time I'm in the room. 
So now we've got pretty much the same gain. It totally changes the tone of this. But now, since we've gain matched it here, we, it's not going to really affect this compressor. So make sure you kind of understand that as you use something like an insert, if you want that to not really mess up what's going to go on in the chain, or if you want to go back and have that kind of process later, make sure that you gain match and level match, because if you don't, uh, anything that you change at any point in that chain throughout your revision process or your later mixing process will change how pretty much everything responds. So make sure you don't clip your audio on the way in. Make sure that you don't clip your audio on the way out of your DAW. Other than that, pay attention to the levels and how they actually feed independent plugins. Do they give you the tone you want? Do they give you the actual feedback you want on like something like an EQ or compressor or saturation? And then other than that, if you are using a bunch of inserts, try to gain match when possible because it can just make your job easier. You're not going to mess up relationships as you start doing things like, uh, you know, taking levels down later or kind of manipulating things later. You don't want to all of a sudden, you know, take a little bit of low end out of a vocal and have to completely redo your compressor settings because it just completely ruined everything after that new EQ that you've added. So keep that all in mind. I think gain staging gets way overcomplicated in the terms of like, specifically level matching everything. I think, you know, just go with vibe. I think it's just really, really important to understand the actual signal flow and how everything kind of reacts to each other. Because once you understand it, you can manipulate that however you want, whether that is allowing things to get super compressed, super saturated, super gnarly, or having clean signal where you're really just compressing for the dB reduction. You're not really trying to give it that analog noise. You're not trying to give it that extra warmth or that saturation. So hopefully this video helped you understand gain staging and just processing with gain in general. If you like this video, please let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. If you want to support the channel, we've got uh, presets, samples, courses, all kinds of cool stuff over there, tons of free content. So head over to that, but that is going to do it for this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Much love, peace. Yeah.